Hi there, this is Unmesh from Pixim Perfect. I hope you're having a great day and if not, I'm sure that you, my friend, are doing your best to make it an awesome one. So a couple of days ago, while I was researching for video topics for here at Pixim Perfect, I came across this. This is called the AI Skin Retouching Actions. Now, it got me thinking and I'm sure it's getting you thinking as well that this is a Photoshop action, right? This is not a plugin. This is not an application, no software, none of that. This is just a simple Photoshop action. How can this thing have an AI built into it? In this video, we're going to figure out whether this is any useful, whether there is any AI in it or it's completely a marketing gimmick. And most importantly, we will learn how to decode actions and learn from them. So without any further ado, let's get started. Back in the magical world of Photoshop and if you want to go ahead and download any of these photos and follow along, check the links in the description as usual. Now, first of all, let's open up Actions by going to Windows and then Actions. Now, once you have installed the Actions, it would be shown right over here. That's what we see. All right, so let's zoom into the portrait. The first one that we're going to try is definitely what we are all excited about and that is skin softening. Right here, they're calling it AI Skin Airbrushing. Let's select that action again. AI, AI always. I'm, there's a point where you just get too sick of hearing the word AI. Anyway, let's just play it and let's see how it works. All right, so this is the skin airbrushing that it has done. Let's take a look at the before and after. Here's the before, here's the after. It has done a pretty good job, right? Let's zoom in. Here's the before, here's the after. I'm not saying it's the best job if you're editing for the cover of a magazine, but if you're doing quick edits, you know, this just works. Let's zoom out and take a look. Here's the before. Here's the after. Now, if you zoom out too much, I'll be very honest with you. Sometimes while retouching, we use frequency separation or just the softening way too much, which looks all right once you're zoomed in. But when you zoom out, it starts to look like wax. In this case, it does not. It still looks decent. Plus, you have the option to control how soft you want it by using the opacity. So if the opacity is a little higher, it'll go softer and softer. If the opacity goes lower, it'll become less and less effective. All right, so let's keep it at 50. What I like here is that they have also created a mask out of this automatically. So check this out. This is the mask. Now this might not be perfect, but for one click action, it just works. Now let's see what is there when we open up this group. Let's open this up. The first one is the detail. You can control how much detail you want. And I really appreciate the person who created the action that they have converted this into a smart object. I've seen a lot of actions in the market where they just rasterize everything into just one layer, merge everything down so that you cannot even tell what was in there unless you open up the actions. In this case, that is not the case. So if you just double click on the high pass, you can modify this if you want a little more detail showing through. So let's zoom in at a proper zoom level and see what are the difference does it create. See, if we increase it, more and more details come through. If you decrease it, less and less skin texture comes through. So you can choose the number according to your wish. We're going to just leave it at two. And then there is softness. If you just open up, so radius controls how much blur there is and threshold controls how much of the details do come through. So that is there. So this is all you can modify, but where is the AI in there? Well, we'll answer that question later. What I liked about this particular one action is that this is a one click action. It just creates a good mask for you to start with. And plus what I love the most Anytime you do create an action, make it as customizable as possible, unless you're doing something very repetitive. So this is customizable. So that's what I appreciate. All right, guys, whenever you're working with actions inside of the actions panel, there's also this thing called the button mode. So right now what happens? We select an action that we like, and then we click on the play button. And we cannot assign any color to an action, but with button mode, you can so that every action turns into a colored button. You can keep it colored. You can keep it gray. That's up to you. But if you choose button mode, see what happens. So you click on these lines right there. You see that grid in the corner of the actions panel, click on that and then choose button mode. Now every action turns into a button. You don't have to click on the play button, select it and play it. Just click on the action. In other words, just click on the button and the action will take place. Now, these are the actions in gray that you see that I had created before personally, and I had not assigned any color to it. That's why they are gray. And there's a problem and kind of drawback with button mode. If you're working with button mode, the problem is you won't be able to see the sets right here. Have a look. There is no sets. 
So a set is a group of actions. So if I just remove the button mode check right over there, just get back to normal, just click on that, you can see that there's a group of everything. For example, you have the Pix Imperfect Frequency Separation Action. If you haven't watched that video yet, do watch it. There's the action right there. You can download it. Anyway, so there's this action right there. If you open that up, inside of that we have Frequency Separation 8-bit and 16-bit. If you open up Default Action, we have a set of default actions right over here. But as soon as you get into button mode, all of that sets go away. Everything just opens up. All right. So it can be a little bit disorganizing, but if you color it, maybe it's okay. Anyway, now you can work with all of this. Everything is well colored into a group so that it is all visual and you don't have to hunt for particular things. Now let's take a look at eye retouching. Now inside of this set of AI actions, we also see some non-AI actions when we look at teeth and eye retouching. So if we just scroll down, there's this thing called retouch eyes. Inside of that, there's also teeth in there, retouch lips and teeth. So let's just click on teeth whitener. You just have to press the button. That's all. Now it gives you a message that you can start painting on the areas where the teeth is. Let's go ahead and stop. Take the brush. White color is selected with a soft round brush and all you got to do is to just paint on the teeth. You can also make sure that the flow and opacity are at 100 or according to your choice, you can set them accordingly. And I have just very bluntly painted over the teeth and here's the before, here's the after. This is a great starting point. Just remove the extras from the lips and take a look. This is definitely workable. Now, if you just open this up, you would learn that there is just a brightness increase right over here. The other thing that has been done right here is that if you look at hue saturation adjustment layer, it looks normal. But if you just go to the yellow target there, you would see that the saturation of the yellows have been turned down and the hue has been changed, right? To have less yellows and also the intensity of yellow is reduced. So combined, it does give a great effect. And that is how we learn with actions. Many of you might have come across this fact that unfortunately, uh, in this industry and not just in the photography and Photoshop industry, but all of the industries in general, the instructor always likes to hold back their secrets because they believe that if the students get to know that or the audience gets to know that, their value would go down and nobody would buy from them. Well, that's not really the case. If you really help the people, they always come to you no matter what. Anyway, that's what I believe in. Different people, different beliefs. I might be wrong, but my point is, sometimes when you work with these actions and you open up and you dig up and see what's in there, you learn a lot. Many a times you learn things that even Photoshop instructors won't tell you. Similarly, we have retouching eyes like brighten eyes. If you click on that, all you have to do is to click on stop and start painting over the eyes to slightly brighten it. I like that it's subtle. It's not very harsh. So if you turn it off and on, you would notice that it's very subtle. And that's a good thing. And these are all very simple things like darken eyelashes and eyebrows. Just click on that. And all you got to do is to paint over the eyelashes and paint over the eyebrows. See how simple that was? See, here's the before, here's the after. Again, if you think it's too much, you can always decrease the opacity. So for this one, let's go for about 30%. If you open this up, you will see that there's nothing special here. It's just a curves adjustment layer. Even you can create this. Let's go to the adjustment and see what has been done here. So they have kept the midtones the way they are, just decreased the shadows. That's it. And also to make sure that it's not brightening up the highlights because have a look here. The highlights are going up. If you double click on the right hand side of the layer and open up the layer styles dialog box, have a look at blend if. It has been taken away from the bright areas. There's nothing complicated here. Just use this to learn a few things and apply to yourself. And it doesn't have to be for darkening the eyebrows or the eyelashes. It can be applied anywhere. So by understanding actions like these and understanding, not just applying it and working with it, understanding it helps you not only apply the things that it's meant for, but also create one for yourself according to your needs. Let's come to another AI feature. And this time at the very top, we have AI mattifier. Now, what the hell is this? Let's play it. Just click on it. That's it. And now, as you can see, it just mattifies the skin. You know what gloss and matte are, right? So it takes away the bright areas. Now again, it's too much. It's just too much. And we only wanted to apply it in the bright areas. So you can make a group of this group. So with this 
group selected, press Ctrl or Command G, hold the Alt key or the Option key, click on the mask button. And now you can take the brush and paint over the areas where you just wanted to remove the gloss. There you go. Here's the before, here's the after. All right. Now, again, this might not have worked perfectly. There are other ones that can. AI Ultra Mattifier. Let's see what it is. Maybe it's an ultra version of the same thing. Let's play that. Let's wait for it. Let's see what it has in store for us. And I'm just stretching the sentence to wait for what it does. All right. I think I'm going to have to cut the video. It's still processing. Oh, it's done. Let's stop it. Here's the before, here's the after. Now, this is what we were looking for. Have a look. It's only targeting the highlights. And I love that. Look, pretty useful, isn't it? But then again, where is the AI in this? What straight away got my attention while I was working through these actions is adding contrast without clipping at all. So what is contrast basically? That is making the bright areas brighter and the dark areas darker, right? Now, when you do that, the extreme bright areas also get brighter. So there's definitely a chance of clipping as also the extreme dark areas get darker as well. But how does this action handle it? Let's find out, let's dig in, and also let's learn from it. So let's open up the action, and here is clipping free contrast. Let's click on that and click on stop. Now you can apply the contrast wherever you like. So I'm just gonna paint on the face, and let's see what it's doing. Definitely this is not clipping. How can an action achieve that? Well, if you open up the group, you would see that there's a simple curves adjustment layer. If you look at the adjustment, this is as simple as curve. We all can do that. But if you double click on the right hand side of the layer, have a look. It has been taken away slightly, just so slightly from the dark areas and also from the bright areas, from the extreme darks and extreme brights to make sure that there is no clipping. Now that is smart and that is what we can learn from this. Now on top of that, if you wanted to add some dimension, you can also add some highlight contrast and it works on the exact same principle. Let's stop and have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. So much more dimension, isn't it? If you open that up, have a look. It has the same curve, but if you open up the layer styles dialog box, see the blend if changed. It has been taken away from the dark areas very smoothly. So this is normal, right? This is normal contrast. Hit OK. There is no blend if there. So what they have done is that they have just taken away half of the slider on the left all the way to the right. That simple. And they created an action out of it and calling it the whole set AI. Not this one in particular, but there's an AI attached to it. So where is AI again? Now, sometimes we have to select the skin tones, maybe to modify them a little bit, maybe to decrease the saturation of it. There can be any reason. So there's also a tool for it, also an action tool for it. So if we come down to the tools section, it has AI select skin tones. Click on that. And hopefully it will select the skin tones. Let's see what it does. Now it says this is what the AI algorithm detected as the skin tone. Now I'm underlining this word again for you. This is what the AI algorithm detected as the skin tone. Like an action has an AI algorithm. Maybe it does. Maybe it does not. Let's find out. Anyway, let's click on continue. It gives you first a preview of which are the selected areas and then it gives you the selection. Now, once you have the selection, you can create a hue saturation adjustment layer and then you can possibly decrease the saturation or do whatever you want with it. Maybe change the hue. That's up to you. That's besides the point. But this is the mask that it creates. Definitely, it also thought the hat was the skin tone. Anyway, this is how it's working and this is how they're attaching AI to it. Let's take a look. Let's just dig in on any of any one of these AI actions. So let's turn off the button mode. And now let's open up any one of these which has AI. For instance, AI skin airbrushing. Let's open up this action and it has an if function. Have a look. If the current document is 32 bits per pixel, then it has to play this action. Otherwise, it has to play 8 by 16 bit files. So let's come down. There has to be some support files down there. All right, have a look. 8 or 16 bit files, AI skin airbrushing. Let's open that. Now, if you look at this action, it has some support files that it runs. For example, if no document is open, it will ask you to open the document and it might convert some modes. Otherwise, this is the action right here. Now, it has simple things like surface blur. It has convert to smart object. All of the simple stuff. Nothing AI about it, right? However, if you scroll down, you would notice 
there's this thing called select subject. But again, this is the AI of Photoshop. <laughs> Just because it has select subject and also inside of select color range, it might have selected skin tones, which Photoshop automatically detects. So just because of these, it just has the right to add AI in front of the action name. That's just it. Any of the actions right here which has select subject in it, they have just added AI at the beginning of the action. That's just so crazy and funny at the same time. For example, right here we have AI skin blur. If you open that up, just because it has select subject, therefore they have added AI in there. Otherwise, if, there's, if it's a regular skin blur, there is no select subject, so it's the regular one. So there is no AI in the action. But again, we cannot say it's not AI because it's Photoshop AI. But the question is to you, is it really AI? That's for you to decide really. Either way, I feel that this is a marketing gimmick. However, it doesn't take away from the fact that these are some of the actions which give you good results with just one click. If not, at least they get you to a good starting point which can be extremely time saving if you're dealing with a lot of images or you don't want to edit it too much. Just a flare, just a touch of skin softening or maybe darkening the eyebrows and the eyelids or just brightening up the teeth. Simple things you want to do, just click on that button and you're good to go. Now, whether you should get something like this or not, that's absolutely up to you. But what I do recommend though, and I highly recommend this, and that is Envato Elements. It's one of those platforms that give you everything it just has everything you want. Stock photos, stock videos, fonts, Photoshop actions, presets. This action was in Envato Elements. So what I love about this is that I've been using Envato Elements for the past one or two years personally, and I've been paying for it. So if you look at the last 10 videos or even uh, the videos that I've made in the last one year, and you just pick out each video, you would find that most of the videos will have some kind of an asset. For example, an image or a design element or an action or a preset that are from Envato Elements. If you just look at their catalog, you would be stunned by the amount of things that they have. They have stock videos, video templates, music tracks, sound effects, graphic templates, graphics, add-ons. Inside of add-ons, you have actions and presets, Lightroom or Photoshop. You have Photoshop brushes, layer styles, palettes, and some others as well. You have web templates. The ones that I use the most is that I tend to go to actions and presets and see what's there, see what's coming. And also I use stock videos, of course, and stock photos, definitely a given. So it's just, if you look at just only the Photoshop actions and presets, there are more than 8,000 actions and presets. And by the way, all of this, all of this is unlimited. So for one single monthly fee, all of this, is unlimited. You can actually download millions of these. And this can be a thousand times cheaper than most of the major asset providers where they charge you nine or ten dollars for a standard license for one single photo. And that's crazy. Now, I remember Envato Elements memberships used to be about 30, 32 ish per month. But right now, at the moment of recording this video, they have slashed prices. I think it's 16.5. Just check the link in the description. I think there's also a student's discount. So if you're a student, you can get an additional discount on top of that. All of the details are in the description. Do check that out. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, make sure to give us a like. And also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you, my friend, don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for your time. I'll see you in my next one. Till then, stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.